Now, the opportunities in the African fashion industry are actually start from the point of empowerment and also employment. Once you're done as a student from fashion school, you don't necessarily have to get employed by someone. My name is Kofi Oshri Dakon, well, KOD, as everyone calls me in the creative space. Um, I'm a broadcaster, fashion designer, uh, creator of Rhythms on the Runway, and a politician. My African dream is one of our founding fathers to see a united Africa, to see an entrenched intra-African trade where, you know, we have no barriers. I thought COVID was actually going to give us that opportunity, but it didn't happen. But uh, my true African dream is to see a united Africa. I was born in 1978, uh, grew up uh, in Accra, well, Winneba, Kumasi and Accra. I walked around a lot in Osu, Oxford Street. It was my favorite part of um, Accra, seeing all the amazing shops. A young guy who had come uh, to Accra from Kumasi and seeing all the amazing shops that line the Oxford Street, that's like back in 1983, 84. And I thought it was really fascinating. Um, also the fact that uh, my parents were okay, but they were not the kind of parents that would just bring me to Oxford Street and shop for me. So I always thought, wow, one day I'd want to grow up and probably own a place on the Oxford Street or um, shop for myself. My father was a director of prisons. My mom was an educationist and she did a bit of everything as well. And, um, you know, she sold fabric at Makola as well. And I think that's really part of the reasons I ended up where I am right now, aside knowing right from a very little child that I wanted to work in the creative space. I knew that I'd be everything that I am. I, I was a little boy who was, you know, a 360 creative person. And my mom wasn't really in support of that. You know, back in the day, everyone, every parent wanted their child to end up as a lawyer, banker, what have you. And all she saw in me was that young boy who wanted to be a creative. And um, she wasn't really in support of it. I mean, being an adult now, and having children, I also totally understand because uh, as a parent, you want your children to have a certain future where they are not very worried about probably relying on other people. And if you are creative in this space and you're not very mindful of what you do, especially back in the day, there was no security for you. So they were quite mindful of what I became. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't listen to them and I'm everything that I am now in the creative space, 100% a member of the Orange Economy. I have a degree in communications from the Institute of Journalism. I also have a diploma in communications and um, public relations from that same, same institution, um, the Great Ghana Institute of Journalism. Other courses in communication and PR, that's, that's what I specially, specialize in. I'm a total public relations person. Whenever I worked with fashion designers like Kofi Ansan, Mauli Okujeto, Kwesi Nti, and even my own very local tailors, they always worked with my ideas. So when I met my wife, who was a fashion designer, she was like, why don't we use the blueprint of Rockaway or Sean John to create a clothing brand? Because um, my, my friends, Kwekuti, had been to the Big Brother house and I made all the outfits he wore to the Big Brother house. Um, Kita and Easy went to the Big Brother house and I made their garments for the Big Brother house as well. And my wife was like, okay, just create a brand. Knowing what I represent as a Pan-Africanist, I thought, why don't I represent Ghana to the fullest to the rest of the, the world? So I chose 1957, which is a very significant year in Africa's history, the year Ghana attained independence. I chose 1957 to represent liberation in the fashion sense, not just to Africa, but the African diaspora and the rest of the world. So I chose 1957 as the name for the clothing line and it's been 10 years since. I think the African fashion space 
has grown or growing it's become very significant but unfortunately um, we're not getting enough credit for it because people from the west are biting from africa i mean i'm sure by now you've seen um our kente being replicated in, in not the woven kente but you know as fabric from china major fashion designers using our traditional ahinema as well without even giving us credit and they're, they're charging so much because there's no even there's no patent for some of these things i mean we're only giving credit for it because everyone knows kente comes from ghana different parts of ghana and maybe certain parts of the west african sub-region as well ahinema is authentically very ghanaian as well but hey who do you blame i think it's it's up to us as africans people in the african creative space to go all out and own what is ours and do so proudly otherwise um you know other people are going to buy it from here and it's always been like that we always say that civilization as it were started from africa but look at us looks like we're getting every element of everything that we are rather from the west it, it should not be the case Thinking of the global market, I think Africa first because Africa is very major. Um, right now, 1957 is sold in certain countries in, in Angola, in Abidjan. We're looking at South Africa as well. And for us, it's a good start as we go continent wide. And um, right from Africa, we can reach out to the rest of the world. I mean, people buy from different parts of the world already and we ship them across the world. But we're very uh keen on getting a continental brand making it a true continental brand and taking it taking it to the next level from there i think one of the major challenges facing quite a number of um, fashion designers well let me speak for guardians for that matter is that of um workforce and also having the right people to replicate your ideas to bring them out the way you really um desire as a fashion person also having um, um human resource that believe in staying in a particular space i mean everyone wants to grow everyone wants to move on but if you're changing your worker so often it's quite difficult to have a certain identity that is known because once they leave you they take a bit of what you create elsewhere whether they're going to work on their own or even work for someone you see replications of things that are authentically yours uh, uh, being exhibited by other fashion designers and you only sit back and frown you can't do much about it but that is one of the biggest challenges we have and also knowing that especially in Ghana most people are done from fashion school and even if they don't have money to start their own um, companies they want to work on their own they don't believe in getting exposure or working for other known brands like maybe Christy Brown or a brand here the gentleman of 1957 to get proper experience but they just want to be on their own which is not a bad thing I mean sometimes you learn the hard way but I believe some of the youngsters because quite a number of them are graduating from fashion school these days and once they are done it will only be right for them to get themselves into spaces like ours like 1957 um, to learn some more, not just knowing how to sew, but also the business element of, of what they do as, as creatives. Now, the opportunities in the African fashion industry are actually start from the point of empowerment and also employment. Once you're done as a student from fashion school, you don't necessarily have to get employed by someone. You could just start by sewing for your immediate family members and getting paid for it and then extends to maybe church members and then the community and um, social media, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever you have. They've made it very, very significant and big for people in the creative space. So if you're a fashion designer or you're down with school and you want to be on your own, all you need is the right people to take the pictures for you, you know, get your pictures right, get your garments put together properly and you're in business. You don't even have to think about being employed by someone. Even though I always recommend young people who are done from fashion school to um, get some experience from known brands that are doing it right. Rhythms on the runway at 10, the green edition. We thought about the green edition because of everything that we're going through as a people. Uh, we saw what COVID did to us. And the fact that when planes were 
not in the air. We could all breathe and it was, you know, birds were flying to different parts of the world. The world became greener. It was for a very short time, but we all saw the difference. And I thought if we um, intentionally focused on a green environment, uh, thought about sustainable fashion, we could, in our own small way, um, protect and also the, get the earth to be greener than it ought to be. You know, so uh, we thought of sustainable fashion, we thought of um, uh, using our platforms as fashion designers and music musicians um, at Rhythms on the Runway to speak and motivate people, conscientize people to uh, think about a green, a green environment, hence our choice of the green edition. And uh, I think that we did a good job with it. I mean, when we started Rhythms on the Runway some 12 years ago, because it's actually been 12 years ago, it was uh, a very small family event. Um, Rhythms on the Runway saw the birth of Ohima Kids Club, a clothing brand for my, well, named after my first daughter, Ohima. And um, we've seen evolution, we've seen growth. It was an intimate event that had probably just family and friends together. Um, at the old twist nightclub, um, headlines hospitality, moving on to Citizen Coffee, going to Golden Chile for two editions. And then we start, started getting major national and multinational brands coming aboard as, as partners. So it's been a story of growth and change. You know, we've really evolved over time. The last 12 years of Rhythms on the Runway, even at uh, the 10th edition, uh, we're now being described by the BBC, for instance, as the biggest cultural expose in Africa. And that means a lot to us. So um, um, we're, we're not looking back. We're, we're looking at uh, taking Rhythms on the Runway, not just as a Ghanaian brand, but it's become a Pan-African brand. And we're looking at going global with rhythms on the runway. Anywhere in the world that you find Africans or people of African uh, origin, we want them to have an experience of rhythms on the runway. For young up and coming fashion designers, I think um, originality is key. Someone ought to see what you design or your garments and tell that this is coming from let's say 1957 or Ophelia Crossland or Velma's Accessories or Abrantia the Gentleman, for instance. Um, originality is key and also staying focused and also going by global trends. The world has become a very small space and you can't be in Ghana and think you're somewhere in Atebi Okoshi and you're sewing for people in that area. So you're limiting it to it. Because once you're on social media, you have the potential of selling to people in any part of the world. So just go all out. Um, go with a lot of confidence. In the words of Marcus Gabe, he says, without confidence in self, you're twice defeated in the race of life. So go ahead, be part of the race. And don't think anyone's better than you. Just keep going, just keep pushing and getting it right. Hello, my name is Kofi Oshredako. You're watching Face to Face Africa, the premier global black voice.